The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Today I'm speaking to the topic, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That Christ in you is a hope of the manifestation of the glory of God on earth. Now Christ in you is a hope of the manifestation of the glory of God in your nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we've been dealing with Jeremiah chapter 29. Now verse 11 in particular. For I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future now for the past one month we have been discussing the fact that god has plans for all of us and then we have asked that we take this satan and the devil mentality out of our mind the fact that satan is is accepted but don't let us always think Satan, devil. Let us know that God also has great plans for us. Now God has plans for you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So we are saying that if this promise is anything to go by, then our future is always better than our now. God has plans for his church. God has plans for the nations. Now we have studied that God told the Jews in Babylon and Nezai in Babylon, two things, two things he instructed. That one, they should settle down. Because the Ezra was going to be long. So they should plant and eat from their produce. They should, they should build houses. They should marry. And give their daughters in marriage. Because the Ezra was going to be long. And that they should increase but not decrease even on the foreign land. So we dealt with that. And then we also tacked on the second thing that God told them. That they should seek the peace and pros the prosperity of Babylon. That why should they seek the peace and the prosperity of the land to which they were captives. Because if it prospers, they too will prosper. In their peace, they will also have peace. Now, so last week, we spoke about the fact that whether we enjoy God's providence or not would depend on how we manage the resources God has freely given to us as individuals and us as a nation. Now, we studied the fact that we as human beings have been made managers of God's earth. 
Sí. When we don't manage what he has really given us well, we corrupt it and eventually we lose it. And so we said that corruption is as a result of mismanagement. Arising from two key problems. Incompetence. And greed. Incompetence. Jobs and positions to friends, family members, acquaintances, and we know definitely that they don't have the ability to do it. Meanwhile, we have given them the jobs. Incompetence. And greed. Excessive desire. For money and possessions. And we say that corruption is a social cancer. It's a danger. Now, the result is poverty. Lack of development. Disease. Premature death. Hopelessness. Unemployment. And we said that when we don't deal with corruption, corruption undermines hard work. And honesty. Because corruption is a human activity, we called upon all of us to raise blocks in our spheres that will be hostile to corruption. When you change, Huh? And you live where the whole nation will come out of corruption. You can say, Sansa, pray, you need party, you need to be a mono, you have more than you see a best year, first of all, and Now, believers, Christians, raise blocks in your workplaces against corruption. I don't know, you see a first, a first of all, baby, you will be our infant, you have prayer. Now, this evening, I will speak to the fact that Christ in you is a hope. Of glory. And I will encourage you to get involved in the affairs of your nations. For we are the sword of the earth and the light of the world. Colossians 1 27. Colossians 1 27. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of, it, of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, this is a glorious mystery. That God, the whole God, that even the universe cannot contain, has come to tabernacle in you. Many years ago, I asked a question from this particular test. When we were in South Africa, and then this lady lifted the hand. I said, okay, sister, do you have an answer? Say yes. So what do you want to say? There's a day in a walker. God is hiding in us. God is hiding in us. So if God is hiding in you, when the enemy surfaces, God will come and from, from your inside, you come and knock you. And when she said that, I laughed. But later on, pondering over that, I realized that she was correct. Because God, it is a mystery. Human being walking about, but God is hiding in that human. That's why we are saying that we are agents of heaven. And the fact that why did he come to make his abode in you so that you will be an agent through whom he will manifest his glory so the christian believer should be taught to know 
that they are integral part of their nation's development. See, it is true that we are citizens of heaven. Now, that is true. It is not just a fact, it is true. But we shouldn't neglect our call to disciple the nations Hansu. beginning from where you are. Now the apostle Paul called on the Philippians to follow his example. To follow his example. And the examples of believers who live like he does. And because there were others in their fraternity who live like as enemies of the cross. Just because their mindset was earthly. Their mind was set on earthly things. They have forgotten one thing. That as Christians, they were citizens of heaven. And that one day, the Lord will come and take them back home. Now, that thought impels Righteousness. Now, when you take that thought from your mind, you can become ordinary. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. I'll start from verse 17. Are, you to, are we together? Right. Join together in following my example. Brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Now, in your name, Monsieur, now Monsieur, what what name, sir? Said the me what young so Monsieur Yesu. Join together in following my example. In your name, Monsieur, I want to call upon all Church of Pentecost members. To follow my example. And then those who model their life just as we do. I've been telling people that if I don't go to heaven, what that means is that there was no heaven anyway. But we are not just going to heaven. We want to reach heaven and the whole heaven will stand in and, and applaud us. Because when we were on earth, we were agents of transformation. For us 18, for us I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Na nipa bebrea wo wo ho a menya mo wo ho anse enkan no na efe nso ebi tena ase bebrea te sa ase nua no atamfo now these were not people were not christians thank you for we no wonye nipa wonye christofo but they live as though they were enemies of the cross and so what tena ase say wo ye christo ase nua no atamfo their destiny is destruction their god is their stomach and their glory is in their shame their mind is set on earthly things. Yes, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you honor me, I will return at the end. Who, by the power of, who by the power that enabled him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. One day we shall be transformed. So we are citizens of heaven. The, the fact is that one day we will be going home. Brothers and sisters, we are indeed citizens of heaven. 
And we are eagerly expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come and take us with him back to heaven. But until he comes, we should not neglect our call to disciple nations. Matthew chapter 28 from 18. So let me remind you of our tax and our mandate. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and, and on earth has been given to me. Now, yes, by the country one say, What the Osro Niasa to do me now, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. So, until he comes, we should go. So, until he comes, we should go into the nation. Now into the people groups and make them disciples of Christ. So you are part of your nation. Now have that mindset as Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar Nehemiah teaches. Now as Daniel and Nehemiah teach. Daniel and Nehemiah teach that. You are responsible for your nation's sin and righteousness. So in their prayer for their nations, they identify themselves with the sin of the land. We should not excuse ourselves from working for the good of our nation. See, because God has linked your peace to the peace of the nation and has linked your prosperity to the <laughs> prosperity of the land. So don't say that me, I don't care. I don't care. This coming election, don't tell yourself, I will not vote. Pray and vote. If he said, Oh, my, oh, my, no, now some year and in the year, dear, when you're cup on the abbasse, a moo and no benau, dear, now in the year, be ano, or my nimono, yam fire. Sometimes when people are saying, I will not vote, this is pride. Go and vote. I feel a bat to a fee, be no to make us say, Oh, I feel the amen to abba, for modding, now go to abba. Now, if you will not vote, who do you want to go and vote to? Uh, Pick a president for you. You have a responsibility to a nation, even to help in choosing a leader. And the you heard me. <laughs> Change your mind. Go and vote. Yeah, at least have the ballot paper. <laughs> and then, if you don't vote for anybody, somewhere. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> what is the You see, you know why, how important you <laughs> the reason why you should be thinking about the nation and getting involved a certain light. Now, many reasons. Some we have discussed. The previous week, but let's take this one from Psalm 122, verse 6 to 8. Psalm 122, from 6 to 8. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. You know, in Jeremiah, God was saying that pray for Babylon. And here he's saying that pray for Jerusalem. So God wants us to pray for the nations. And may there be peace with, within your walls and security within your citadels, in your strongholds, there should be security. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will say, I will seek your prosperity. 
Awradi ye nyan kupon fi enti me shishe papa mama wo. You know the psalmist is saying that for the sake of my family, I will seek the peace of the nation. O dem to phone say. Because you can't say that I'm running away from the nation. What about your 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 grandmother who cannot run away? And, and sometimes when there is danger on the land, little children like this ones, the parents will have to leave their hands and the parents will have to run for their life. For the sake of your family, pray for the peace. And security of nations. So they be no man in the na basa basa bemoa. Peni phoneu timi gani? No we jam of rati se we num. E busi aninti ya mumpa ya mumpa na sumbi. Now for the sake of your friends, pray and seek the peace of the nation. I don't know. Ya mfa phoneu mumi ya mumpa ya mfisho mumpa na na sumbi. And then for the sake of the house of the Lord, the church. Seek the nation's peace and seek its prosperity. Now, Christians should understand that we have been made priests to the nation. We have been made priests to the nation. I read from 1 Peter 2, verse 5. First Peter 2 5. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And to abide, na ma ye hum hum mu dain asofu kuo krong krong se mu bebo hum hum mu afodia enam Jesus Christo so so unyango pong eni as a priest to the nations. Se asofu ema amain you who must constantly stand before God for your nation. Se bribi amu ujina unyango pong eni ema amain and bring the needs their needs to God in prayer. Na udu amain eni adi e ku nyami eni mupai. And then draw God into the affairs of the nation. One more thing I saw about King Yami. Let me say this again. None of you hearing the sound of my voice is qualified to criticize the nation. As a Christian, if you are not praying for the nation, you don't qualify to speak against the president. You don't. Because you are not doing your part. Look at See, we just leave our presidents and our leaders in the hands of the forces of darkness. Yeah, yeah. And some, some of them are so helpless. They don't have the power you have. It is the church's responsibility to bear them up in prayer. Yet, we don't do it. The Christian believer is not only a priest. To the nations, but we are royals as well. As as kings, this year we cannot not be unconcerned about what goes on in the society. See, there's a story of David and Bathsheba. The reason why David saw Bathsheba's nakedness was that David was walking on the roof of his house. See, the kings do that because they are surveying the land. And so, if by the grace of God we have been made royals, you cannot say you don't care what goes on in the nation. It is when you come on, I'm not doing so. I am here for, and since you can't say on my name, I'm in fire. So, with the understanding that we are royals, we are kings, we are holy priesthood, royal priesthood, the church must intentionally raise capable members who are trustworthy. Who hate dishonest gain 
and unleash them to change the world. Now raise capable people. Trust world. People who hate this honest game. Let, let us push them into the spheres of society. So they will bring the kingdom culture on the cultures of our land. Now we shouldn't shy away from politics. And governance. Christians who are royals should be interested in chieftaincy. Now if you are a Christian and you are not from a royal family, don't go and buy the, the throne. It is, you don't qualify. But I'm talking to Christians who are from the royal family, and not just from the royal family, they, they, who, uh, who are qualified to be queens, uh, chiefs, kings, and queen mothers. Because sometimes Yeah, that's right. <laughs> See, chieftaincy is leadership. So let us go in there and with the wisdom God has given us, provide leadership for the community. That's all. Don't be afraid of what they have been doing. Now, if you go there as a Christian, stop them from slaughtering the animals. Yeah, bring them back to God. Bring them back to God. There was this queen mother of a crapping, a cropon, Nanadokua. It was a member of the Church of Pentecost. She served that community as a queen. For 50 years. And in all these years, she never did anything against the throne. Now she will not slaughter any, any animal. She will not pour libation. 50 years. She died in 2016. So who says you cannot be a Christian king? No, you can. In doing this, the church must raise and release Christ-like believers into the society. Obadiah chapter 1. It's only one chapter. So Obadiah 1. 17. Obadiah chapter 1, 17. Obadiah, Nia, Edi Kainoa, Etiba, Kopenti, Eche, Eimudun Son. Now I read together. Yeah, okay. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy, and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Now they will be possessed here in Frimu for Betnaho. On Mount Zion, there will be deliverance. Zion is a metaphor of the, of the church. So Obadiah's prophecy was beyond his horizon. He was talking about the mystery of the church. So that in the church, God expects sinners, people weary and burdened, who have given their lives to Christ to, to be delivered from the claws of the enemy and from the power of sin. So let them come as drug addicts. But in the church, there will be deliverance. Let them come as womanizers. But in the church, there will be deliverance. Yes. And these people who are delivered 
San Crofo ya when you're Giano. According to verse 21. Oh, to us, when you move, you know, back on verse 21, please. Deliver us now. These who came and were delivered. I feel when you are buyer, you are being your own fan. Would you now they will be called deliverers because well, they have been delivered? Well, be free one at G4. They will go up on Mount Zion. They will, they will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Israel. Jacob refers to the spiritual. Jacob to the earthly. Jacob refers to uh, the spiritual. And then Esau refers to the earthly. So when we say Mount Zion, then we are talking about institutions of the world. Jacob, Jinaho, Emma, who whom would ye, Naisa, Jinaho, Emma, who nam the entire Kazioa, not ye, Ka, Unyankupon to me, and I bet one walk with Yamia. So in Mount Zion, there will be deliverers. Ain't he wo Zion? Be personal, ye bin ya, one will be ya or jay. Yeah, though in Mount Zion, there will be deliverance. Wo Zion be personal or jay ever, and then the deliverers or the rescuers or those who have been saved will go out into the world. And govern the world's institutions as deliverers, as rescuers, as saviors. And to one, one, two, one, our friend, one, a Jefose say no, what be cool we are singing now, no one could did the in Yumakuo and in Noma Hodua, a war warning in us. We need to raise the Moses in the now, church. Say your bomb, what is your betty, Tinny party, say Moses, and what's up to bring deliverance to to Israel, not one Egypt, what did what dear. Now we need to raise the Josephs again so they can prevent preserve nations from farming and dying from farming and drought. We need to raise the Daniels again who walk on the corridors of the kings and show them that Jehovah God still lives. I see it to me. Titi, you permit to Daniel. Obey your Juma. I want him fear. I try him for this. Oh, you mean that so? Etias. And that God rules in the affairs of men. Now, oh, you mean the Nipa Abrabadi? Now we need to raise the John Wesleys again. I see it to me. Titi, you permit to say John Wesley be him to be saviors on the land. Now, what you mean? I at the four. I was as and we need to be intentional about this. Now we I see a shada aye. We need to be intentional about this. I see a shada aye. Evil will have too much room when good goes to hide. When the light is off, darkness will prevail. So let us arise and shine. For our light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon us. So we shouldn't just assume that when we convert people, they will automatically change their spheres. No. No. We should teach them to know their responsibility that they are new faith places on them. Now you are a Christian. Let them know that the Christian, being a Christian, the new faith places a responsibility on them that they should go out there and shine as light. Of the world. I see it to me, Chile won't say, What budget you for free, Munna Sudian said, Obeco, we ask your question, say, Hi. God has so much confidence in you. When you're coupon, or you more receive, Moon Papa, as a Christian believer, say, Oh, you didn't because of the deposits he has made in you. The son in Nepa, or the Gumu, and in fact, you are God's hope for the manifestation of his glory. So let us break free of the fortress of the church and impart our nation as salt and light. Because Christ in you is a hope of the manifestation of the glory of God. Christ in you is the hope of the manifestation of the glory of God at your workplace. Christ in you is the hope of the manifestation of the glory of God in the nation. This is how my God hopes in you. We 
so please move away from the fortress of the church and get involved in the affairs of the nation I want to challenge you not to be part of the evil that goes on at your workplace don't disappoint God he goes in you so don't disappoint him make him proud again bring some smiles on the lips of God I know you will do it I know you will do it I know you will rise and do it so I encourage you to do it don't be afraid you God will help you so rise let us change our lives God bless you